The philosopher Nietzsche said that there's a very interesting implication if we believe that time is infinite, which is that if time really is infinite, and if all possible events, though very large, are probably finite, then it logically follows that everything repeats. In other words, every event in the universe returns again and again and again over infinite time. And this is an idea that was captured by the Hollywood blockbuster movie Groundhog Day, where a character in that film relives the same day over and over and over again. And Nietzsche's idea of infinite repetition is fascinating. It means, for example, that the listener to this broadcast has heard this before at an infinite moment sometime in the past and will hear it again at some infinite moment sometime into the future. In an infinite universe, which is uniform, that is, if the universe goes on forever and ever in space but contains roughly the same number of galaxies everywhere, then it'll be the case that there will be an infinite number of duplicates of you and me. That is to say that if I travel far enough in space in any given direction, I'll come across another Paul Davies, identical to me, having had identical experiences. That's the sort of result that follows just by applying the mathematical rules of infinity. A lot of people are reluctant to believe that. They think, well, okay, it's all right mathematically, but physically it makes no sense to think of there being duplicate beings out there. In fact, there are an infinite number of duplicate beings. In an infinite universe, anything that can happen will happen and happen infinitely often. But can the human mind even contemplate such a vast subject as infinity? Jocelyn Bell Burnell again. Clearly, it is a problem because our experience is relatively limited. And a lot of folk have real trouble with infinity. Some people get really depressed when they discover about the size of the universe because it makes them seem so small and insignificant. I think professional astronomers actually don't think about it. We avoid thinking about it by writing it down as a mathematical concept of powers of 10, and it's just a number. And you avoid the sort of human impact and going mad by treating it as just a number. The French mathematician Blaise Pascal was famous, among other things, for a line he wrote, something like, the silence of these infinite spaces frightens me. And many of us, as children, may have had the first realization of the notion of infinity. You might be lying in bed and you start thinking about the other planets, and then the other stars, and the other galaxies, and then you have this idea, what if it goes on forever? Or what if I stepped off a cliff and started falling, and I never stopped falling? There's sort of a dual nature to this. On the one hand, it's frightening because it makes you feel small. On the other hand, it can be liberating and vivifying if we think of ourselves as being able to merge into that infinity or be in some way a part of it. In reality, all we can ever really do is to make calculated guesses as to whether the universe is boundless or not. However, in the field of topology, which concerns a geometrical structure of multidimensional spaces, exciting developments are taking place. The brilliant Russian mathematician Grigory Perelman is said to have answered a century-old maths problem, the Poincaré conjecture, which seeks to understand the shape of the universe. So, what future can the finite or infinite universe look forward to? William Lane Craig. The projections based upon scientific evidence are not very encouraging. What science shows is that due to the thermodynamic properties of an expanding universe, eventually the stars will all burn out, all matter will collapse into dead stars and black holes, the universe will grow increasingly cold, it will grow dark, the black holes and the dead stars will then begin to disintegrate and evaporate so that the universe will become a dilute and rarefied gas of elementary particles and radiation expanding endlessly into potentially infinite darkness. A universe in ruins, the universe will be dead, dark, dilute, and cold. Perhaps not the most optimistic outlook then, but fear not. 
a team of scientists at St Andrews University in Scotland have found that it will take 70 billion years before the universe will start getting dark. In the concluding part of our voyage into the unknown, we'll be visiting the Magical Infinity Hotel, where you can always guarantee a vacancy, no matter how full it is. Infinity. Everything you ever thought. And a little bit more. I'm Heather Cooper, and A Brief History of Infinity is a heavy entertainment production for the BBC World Service. <laughs>